to you this morning from the Bible and to maybe talk a little bit about the good news that Joy just read from us, for us. And so there's four realities this morning that I think it's fitting for us to think about, to consider as we honor and remember Bob. The first is that Bob's life was and Bob's life is a gift. The Bible says that every good and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights. So everything good that we receive in this life, including loved ones, especially loved ones like Bob, is from God. Just as the sun is the source of all warmth and light that we receive, God is the source of all goodness that we experience. God himself is good, and he makes very good things. So Bob is a good gift from a good God, and it's fitting that we thank God today for Bob's life. The second reality that I think we should consider is that life is short. Hear this verse from scripture. All flesh is like grass, and all its beauty like the flower of the field. The grass withers flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. You may be wondering what this talk about grass is all about. And for those of us who live in Southern California, uh, the imagery is particularly helpful to us. Right now you look around and the hills are lush and green as they were as I drove here. But if you've lived here long, you know that this green beauty, it doesn't last long the grass withers. And this verse is giving us an accurate picture of our time on earth. We are that grass that withers. We all must face death, some sooner than others. The Bible doesn't shy away from this family. In fact, the Bible talks a lot about death and it even tells us that it is healthy to consider say that on a day like today, it is appropriate for those of us that are here, those of us that are living, to lay it to heart, that that this will be our end, too. God wants us to be thinking about these things. And so perhaps you feel a tension in what I've already said. If God is good, why does he allow us to experience the pain and the grief of death, of losing someone? Death surely cannot be good. Why must death be the end of all mankind, as I just read? God does not leave us on our own to grasp the answers for these really hard questions. He tells us in his word in the Bible that death is a result of sin. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death. Death is the wages that sinners have earned. It is the just payment for sin. That's why it says wages have wages there. But what is sin? Well, sin is, is violating God's law. It's going against his intention for, his good design for humanity. And the sinfulness of mankind is crystal clear if you read God's law, which is found in scripture, but it, it's also plain to us as humans because God made us. God made us like himself. The Bible says that he made us in his image. So we have a sense of right and wrong. We have a conscience. Everyone must face death because everyone has gone against God's good design. In that same book I just read from, Romans, God tells us that all have sinned. All have done what I just described. All fall short of God's glory. Death is tragic. Death was not God's intention for humanity. Death is not what God even desired for Bob. We 
when God created the world, because he is so good, God gave mankind the freedom to either live under his gracious rule, according to his excellent and beautiful design, or to directly rebel against him and face the consequence of death that he laid out for us. And mankind, the very first humans, they chose death. And death is not good, we quote this. But since God is good, since God is just, he, he must follow through on his word. If God did not keep his word, he would cease to be God. But listen, God is so good. In fact, he is so kind that even though we sinned against him, he chose to make a way for us to be restored. He chose to offer hope beyond death. And this leads me to the third truth that we ought to consider today, that God offers hope in Jesus Christ. So I read the first half of Romans 6.23. I want you to hear the second half. The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. What a beautiful turn in the story, right? God chooses to give sinners yet another gift, another good gift. And, but this gift infinitely surpasses all of his other good gifts. Death is what all have earned. It's, it's deserved that we receive this. And yet, a free gift, God gives a, a free gift that is undeserved, right? It cannot be earned. It is simply God's benevolent choice. God chooses to freely give life, eternal life. Though it is freely given, it would be a grave mistake to think that it cost God nothing, though. No, someone had to pay the wages for sin. God must stay true to his word, as I've said, and this is where Jesus comes in. Listen to one of the most beautiful Bible verses. You may know it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. God gave his Son that we may have eternal life. It cost him the death of his one and only son, Jesus. What love. How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. This Jesus, it is undisputed that a man by the name of Jesus of Nazareth walked the earth over 2,000 years ago. It is undisputed that he was killed on a Roman cross and that many eyewitnesses testify to having seen him risen from the dead. Jesus died in the place of sinners, though he himself had never sinned. The innocent was condemned in place of the guilty. But Jesus didn't just die. No, Jesus beat death. Jesus rose so that those who put their faith in him may share in that resurrection life for all eternity. And the reason I share this with you today is because Joy has shared with me that this is the hope uh, that, that Bob professed to have. And I know that this good news we're talking about doesn't diminish the fact that many will still grieve. Joy, you will still grieve and experience the pain of his loss. And so there's a fourth reality for us to consider in closing. Hear God's word once more from the book of 2 Corinthians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our affliction so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort which we ourselves are comforted by God. As I said earlier, God deeply cares. He deeply cares about our pain and our grief. Even if he didn't say it this straightforwardly in Scripture, he has proven his love and care for the world by giving up his Son. But he does say this in his word. He says this to us. He says this to you, Joy, that... 
just as God is the source of all good, he tells us he is the source of all comfort. And so there isn't a trial that we can experience that is beyond God's ability to provide comfort. He comforts us in all our affliction. Today, as you miss Bob, seek comfort from our merciful Father. And so let's pray. Let's go to our Father.